Welcome to the coolest politically correct channel you'll ever find out there. It's Curtis YZ, and get ready to strap yourself in for the coolest stuff ever. And prepare yourself for today's topic. Memory Origin of Alien Documentary Review. It'll be a bumpy ride. Warning, warning, this video may not be suitable for semen. But just in case I'll put as many signs and trigger warnings as possible, we want to stay safe here. Don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and share the action. Curtis YZ. Channel. What's up everyone, it's Curtis YZ and today I'm going over Memory, the origin of Alien, the documentary about Alien, spoiler, if you haven't seen Alien, click off now or if you don't want to listen to that, um, just whatever you do. I was intrigued by this because I saw an advertisement on YouTube and I like Ridley Scott's Blade Runner and I like Alien by default because it is attributed with to me at least the the same universe and that's the only reason why I gave it like a second chance otherwise I just kind of looked at it as like a horror movie I didn't really see the the brilliance behind it underneath it on the surface of it any of it I'm gonna point out real quick that there is one woke moment in this show and just kind of comes out of the blue and honestly I couldn't even critique it because I honestly couldn't tell what they were trying to get their point across what what they were trying to say something about men guilt in in the movie not on my part. I have nothing to do with Hollywood. It's not up to me. That's completely Hollywood, okay? If there's any male guilt, that's on Hollywood. I have nothing to do with that. I'm just a viewer of movies. I have no control over that, so don't blame me. It's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm not in that category, so I don't like hearing about it in the documentaries, but I like to think that she was referring to men in Hollywood, which is more understandable at least men in you know power producers directors whatever they are agents whatever whoever i'd like to think that that's who they were talking about and if that's the case it is completely understandable um yeah i i get it i i agree there needs to be more diversity we need women and diverse characters in general to be portrayed as well as they were portrayed back when alien came out and ridley was the main character and they mentioned that it was r originally written for a man, and isn't it interesting, they say, how it was an interesting character. Yes, well, they need to write interesting characters. You know, the storylines, the backstory, whatever it is, they need to write those stories well. You know, um, grounded, just like they used to back in the day when they made characters, they made them very interesting and compelling and understandable and relatable. We're just not seeing that these days. They keep it so vague in general, I suppose, and I think that Hollywood's just afraid of offending somebody, but you shouldn't let that stop you from making a good, interesting character have flaws, to be able to develop the character based off of those flaws, and to grow as a character based off of those flaws, things like that. You know, honestly, I, I, I like Aliens. I, I just remember the storyline of one because it's very simple and coherent. So Ripley was a strong female character, this whole documentary is what they do break down interesting things that they mention when regarding the robot I, I get their points and it, it is I, noted okay I do think there's some um, some relevance to what they're saying uh, everything regarding the woke stuff however portrayed very cringy in this documentary kind of it does make sense and it does to me check out and this is the reason why we like alien because it does give us a strong female protagonist that is well done, that is a flushed out character. You know, characters need flaws so that they can grow. Spoilers. You know, Ripley just doesn't really start out flawed, but slowly, as everyone gets picked off, becomes stronger and stronger as the leader. And there is a lot of things that they're talking about in this documentary, how there's a clear class difference between the scientists and the lower class workers, I suppose. And a lot of interesting things that they bring up that I just was not aware of. The visuals behind Alien, the artists behind it all. Very interesting stuff, how it all came to be. And it really works because of it, because it makes it feel more realistic. This creature feels like an organic creature. They said it even in the documentary how it's a realistic movie, but then they also mention how there's a lot of unrealistic things about the movie. And I don't think they clarified it well enough, so that's what I want to do here, is even those unrealistic things are still really realistic. For example, they're talking about the water scene when the water's dripping on the guy and he's looking for his cat. And how there's there makes no sense. Why is there water? And Ridley said, I don't care if it doesn't make sense. It looks good. And I A, I agree with him. And B, 
um, when I saw that, I immediately thought, wow, that ship is so big that it's got like machines that are just pumping this humidity. It's got like its own atmosphere. You know, my mind was just going crazy with thoughts of how this ship could possibly be so big that it has water just dripping and how efficient it must be to be able to handle all that water and somehow cycle it somewhere. In that aspect, it is still realistic. Yes, I had to think about a couple of things to maybe make it make sense, but this is space and this is a giant ship that we have nowhere near the technology for, so it, it it's not really a big leap in reality to think that that might be a thing somehow, some way. Visually, it was amazing, obviously, but the, the, the feeling of how large the ship is and everything is just, it's it's all there for this movie. Not, not a lot of people are going to, you know, probably review this documentary, so I figure I would. Is it worth buying? If you really like alien things, I, I say yeah, um, besides that one moment, which it, it it's about... There's like two minutes of wokeness, really. So it's they they kept it very professional. There's it, it's mostly a giant dissection on the most iconic thing about the um, the movie, which is the alien chest burst, and just watch and seeing just seeing how much was going into that one scene is incredible. Seeing all the different aliens that were made before the final product, insane. It's just insane amount of work. Tell me what you think in the comments. Are you going to go see this? Are you going to wait till it's free on Netflix or something? Alien 3 and the 4th, fine, they're okay. Alien 1 and 2 is where it's at, and then Prometheus and Alien Covenant, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, especially after watching this documentary, I totally respect what Ridley Scott was doing with Prometheus, and the way that he made it all look just totally feels like the original artist, his vision... Kind of like Ralph McQuarrie, the way he saw this alien world. And um, for that, I respect Ridley. I, th I feel like he totally is just keeping it so grounded to what what he feels like this universe is. And I just, I just really respect his vision on this franchise. So uh, I hope he somehow... I, I want to see more aliens. I want to see more Blade Runner. I want to see more Man in the High Castle. I want to see all these worlds somehow connect. Quick shout out because I keep forgetting. I want to do as many shout outs as I can. So shout out to Entertainment Hacker. Great channel. Great content. Great guy. Thanks for uh, watching. If you like content like this, then smash that like button and then uh, go down there and subscribe to become a member of the Curtis YZ Subscribers Group of People Club. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Cotis YZ subscribers group of people clap. Become a member today.